So they're not making any more Bitcoin, meaning there's a, a finite amount of it, but the market cap will go up only because that finite amount will continue to raise. There's a finite amount. That market cap will increase because people will continue to pour money into this network. So although there's a finite amount, like I can have a, a Bitcoin is, you can break it down like eight decimal places. So unlike the dollar, right, where you have a couple of deci decimal places, right? A Bitcoin, you have eight decimal places. You're mad smart, Fitz. Hmm? You mad smart. I just wanted to tell you that. Like, you be using words Joe, Joe don't know. And my, it's like, my bad. <laughs> like, you really, like, I, I'm learning so much about money in this episode. I'm sorry, keep going. I just wanted to give you flowers for that. Cause I'm like, dang, I feel mad brilliant right now. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. So it's only a couple decimal places, like you, $3.99, only two decimal places. Exactly. But you can break a Bitcoin down to eight. So even though the market cap will increase, right? It may be a point where it's, 0. 0.00001 Bitcoin could be equivalent to $1, mm -hmm. which would be crazy, which means that, you know, Bitcoin is probably at a million dollars per coin or something crazy like that. Do you think Bitcoin is going to get to a million dollars? Oh, absolutely. A million dollars per coin? Yeah. So Ethereum, you think, it, like, you think like 10,000 is pretty much it? You're going to sell off all your Ethereum? No, 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 no. Or you no, think no, it'll go no, crazy? No, so? I'm saying... 10,000 is a realistic goal or realistic um, projection as an investor. I'm an investor in Ethereum, so I see it getting to 10,000. But it easily could be where Bitcoin is. Easily, I can see it getting to 10,000. Bitcoin has a lot more room for growth. Like people think that we're late on Bitcoin, like really don't understand. Like we're in a supply shock of Bitcoin, right? Like at What's one point, supply shock. supply shock meaning that there's not that many Bitcoin out here left. So there's only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be created, right? So a certain amount of Bitcoin are released into the world every day. It's about eight or 900 at this point, every day. The last Bitcoin, won't, in every four years, that number is cut in half. Every four years, that number is cut in half. So in four years, it's going to go from like 800 to 400 a day, right? Mm. So... <clears throat> The last Bitcoin won't be released into society or mind, right, until the year 2141. So you have an asset that can potentially increase in value for over the for 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 the at least the next hundred years. Dang. And right now it's at 50 something thousand. Is that like 54,000? Something it's like that. It's not too late. It's not too late. Are you waiting on a pullback or anything like that? Um, no, because I use a different strategy, right? It's called dollar cost averaging. So T set in the course? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Of course. So dollar cost averaging is where it's, it, it stops you from asking that question, should I buy now? Should I should I wait on a dip? Because I hear a lot of people, oh, should I wait on a dip, right? Well, the thing is, you don't know when a dip is coming. Mm -hmm. You don't know if Bitcoin is going to shoot up to 100,000 and then dip back down to 50,000 and never see 20,000 again. You don't know that. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't know if Bitcoin's gonna drop and hit 10,000 tomorrow. We don't know that. So we use dollar cost averaging, which is pretty much you buy consistently. You put yourself on a schedule, whether you're gonna buy every week, every day, every month. You decide how much of your income you want to invest in any particular asset, right? Whether it's 10%, 5%, 2%, or 1%. And you you can very easily set it up on auto um, on, 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 on auto pay or something like that on Coinbase, whereas they'll take out a specific amount from your account. That's crazy because I, I actually saw that on here. I'm like, yo, why would I do that? Yeah, because that what, what that does is you won't get in at the best price, but you won't get in at the worst price. But by the time you have finished accumulating, gathering the amount of Bitcoin that you want, maybe you have a goal of getting one Bitcoin, right? By the time you get that one Bitcoin, um over the span of time, it'll be at a good average cost. It might gotcha. not be at the height, right? It might not be at the low. I didn't get it at 3,000, but I didn't get it at 100,000 either. Right, 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 you know? for sure, for sure. So um, it's, it's a safe way to accumulate an asset that you have um, high hopes for or gotcha. that you got a good, strong um, projection for. Is there anything else that's like super low you think is going to be like the next Doge? I want to find um, the next Doge. The next... <laughs> and I know I'm thinking about the it next all wrong. So, My mindset is just it's so, too get rich quick right now, well, well, and I'm sorry. No, no, no. So, uh, so, so Dogecoin, and, and then I'll tell you a couple of things that I'm looking at. Um, Dogecoin is is like I said, every year it pumps, 
right? And I know we got off that and started talking about bull market and bear market, mm-hmm. but every bull market, Doge pumps consistently. Like, it's very predictable. Mm-hmm. So, if you understand how to look at charts just a little bit and see that, okay, these things are going sideways. They're not going up. They're not going down because the market is only going to go up, down, or sideways mm-hmm. when you're looking at a chart. When it's going sideways, right, for an extended period of time, that's normally during a bear market, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when you want to buy Dogecoin because a market is simply buyers and sellers. So all of everybody who you see buying Dogecoin, they got to buy it from somebody. Who do you think they're buying it from? The people that are selling it. The people who are selling it. Who, and when did they get it? They got it when it was boring, when nobody yeah. was talking about it, when it was going mm. sideways. So I just gave y'all a play. Pretty much, if you want to make money on cryptocurrencies, even if it's just Doge. Specifically, you're like, okay, I like Doge for some mm-hmm. reason, right? And you're like, I wanna, I wanna make money on this next time more than I made this time. Wait you can for wait line. for it to flatline, buy it, be patient. It might take months, it might take a year, but we've seen the type of growth that it has every time it pumps, right? And then you turn yourself into one of those people who are selling to everybody else instead of those people who are buying at the top, only getting a little bit of profit or even actually losing money on that purchase. So when it flatlines, the probability is higher that it goes up than goes down? I'm saying is it flatlined based, then drop like that? Based, that doesn't happen often. Based on, when I say flatline, so it'll it'll go back to a major, and I'm getting technical, but it's, it's called a support level. Um, it'll go back you to a major. Structure? Uh, yeah, there's, there's videos on support okay, and resistance level because I do think every investor needs to understand some form of technical analysis, mm-hmm. right? Um, but once and what's technical analysis? I'm sorry, Joe. I got you, bro. <laughs> so te- technical analysis is when you when you when you see you've ever seen a movie where you got these big screens and you're on Wall Street, right? And you got all these charts and graphs, mm-hmm. right? Technical analysis is understanding what you're looking at when you see these different charts. They're a representation of price, right. but more importantly, they're a representation of human emotion just in digital graphic form. Mm. You know, so. What do you mean? So so market so so market cycles everything in world in the world has a cycle yeah. right the moon that's why the oceans have high tide low tide um, our bodies have cycles all these things right markets have cycles right sometimes you feel great sometimes you don't feel great that is represented in the market right in cycles so you get to a point where you're um you're in disbelief you're you're in disbelief oh I don't believe it's going up then you get to a point where oh man this is really going up then you get to a point where, oh man this is going up so high it's never going to come down that's called euphoria right mm. when you see people too excited about something and they're like it's never going down that's when you get worried because nine times out of ten it's going down after that God. you know so understanding human emotions when you're looking at these charts will help you become a better investor <laughs> and learning and and, and give you um, guidance or guidelines or cues as to when to get in. Gotcha. Right, gotcha. and when to get out. Okay. All right, so I got it. I got some Ethereum a little bit. All right, so, and what you else? All right, what else so cool. I be buying? All right, so one what of the- about this whole XRP thing? So, all right, so, <laughs> so XRP, um, XRP is one of those things where I, I feel like it's high risk to me. Mm-hmm. High risk, high reward though. Because gotcha. right now they're going through some type of legal battle with the SEC. If they come out on top, XRP will likely have a major bull run, right? So that's something that I would trade. Love to trade that, right? From a long-term investment standpoint, the actual token itself, I don't see what value it has. Mm -hmm. The people who created it still own 50% of the supply. Mm -hmm. That's a big issue for any cryptocurrency because it's like it can easily be manipulated. If I own 50% of something, I pretty much got say-so over it, right? So it's like if I own 50% of the business and you only own 49%. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Exactly. Yes. That, but when the people have it. Or 51%. Right. And but when the people have it, then the people decide, and that makes it more solid. Right. So in a, to find a good, successful cryptocurrency, it's important to identify the distribution of the supply, right? Meaning that 
is it equally distributed amongst the community or is there a small group of people who own and control most of this network? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because once again, crypto is all about decentralization. Naturally, we'll have some hybrid situations where there's a form of centralization and decentralization. But overall, the fundamentals, the foundation of crypto is all about decentralization. So to find good quality long-term Cryptocurrencies, you want to find things that have a nice decentralized community because what happens is now you have more input from the community. And I haven't ran into any problems that humans as a collective couldn't solve. Mm. So when you give humans the ability to work on things and fix problems and to build things without any roadblocks or hurdles or without getting permission, you get a lot of things done, which is why crypto is growing as fast as it's growing. 